Bruh. Bruh. All right, so hey, we're going to read this one, which I think is kind of interesting. Marker uh, uh, benchmarks for database. So this is my favorite database, uh, my favorite edge database. I know this guy, very nice guy. Um, he wrote a little blog article about how he made this thing super duper fast. And so I really want to read this one because I actually think this one is pretty cool. Okay, so hey, alerts are going off. I think this is going to be pretty cool. Yeah, edgy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Edge Lord reads article about how database is fast. By the way, just a little shout out to the Terso team. There's like several core contributors to Linux on the uh, on the on the Terso team. They're very very smart. They're very good engineers. They're very very good engineers. All right, Vercel benchmarks show Terso has low latencies everywhere. What the Edge data edge is good for? What good is the Edge if your database is on the other side of the planet? This is true. Deploying to the edge is a cool new thing developers do. This is true. They really do feel like it's the coolest thing. And why shouldn't you? Being able to deploy the code that runs everywhere without worrying about uh, picking locations yourself and always being a couple of milliseconds away from your users. Like, what's not like to like? All right, here we go. Back from the... Let's see. Okay. The, uh, Guillermo, 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 Guillermo sends a tweet uh it's true the internet feels faster once you've stepped uh step into the us and it's true that edge computers help makes this better but the moment you need to provide dynamic experience things get m muddier like your database is somewhere in the us so fetching data uh from it will add a considerable amount of latency so this has always been a huge problem when it comes to databases uh in edge stuff right is that if you are trying to like surf it from australia you're gonna have to go to us you're gonna have to go to your nearest database right and so, like, this is a this is a big deal. Uh, how databases compare? Vercello recently announced a cool demo tool, which allows you to pick a database and test the latency from edge functions to the database. Each database is assigned a preferred region, and test will fire ten requests directly to that region, and another ten requests through an edge region closer to you. Here's an example of what the output is for me using Planet Scale database. Uh, the light blue line shows the regional latency. The latency when the edge function is executed closest to the database in the pure purple line or in the purple line shows the latency when the edge function is executed close uh, closest to me, the user. Okay, very interesting. So let's see. Globally, so we have some, you know, there's definitely some, some times here. When it's closer, it's, it's pretty dang quick when it's close, right? Latency, processing time, end to end. All right, this is the total latency from the client perspective. It considers the total round trip between the uh, browser and the edge, your internet connection, uh, and will... A location will influence these results. Okay, so global, we're somewhere around in here, regional right in here. Now, one thing I don't like about these tests right away, uh, this is kind of a rule of thumb. Whenever you do tests, you, I mean, I know it's just supposed to be simple, but 10 requests isn't necessarily a great, a great thing, right? You know what I mean? It's like, this isn't a great comparison, but we'll, we'll go for it. It should give you perhaps a direction, right? And what this says to me is that if the request is close to you, you can respond fairly fast. If the request is not next to you, right, and go somewhere else, you still respond fairly quick, but it's longer, right? Needs a larger sample size for sure, absolutely, right? Okay, good, because, you know, there's a lot of problems with these type of measurements. When someone does this, you have to ask yourself, what's running on their computer? What's running on the routers that they're testing on? How clean is their connection? Because, you know, real talk, if you're sitting here trying to do performance testing that also involves internet requesting, and next to you in the next room is somebody watching Netflix and you're both on Wi-Fi, it completely does change the behavior of these latency distributions. So, is it fair to do that? You know, that's where you got to ask yourself some questions. How was this conducted? But assuming they all had the same condition, right? So we're going to make the assumption that these are all the same condition. I'm a couple hours away from Toronto. So what the graph above shows is that life is great in North America, in particular, if you're on the East Coast. East, uh, US East 1 is AWS's largest region, and it's, uh, and it's where databases tend to be. This graph shows me that there's an edge function even closer to the database, the delta between the purple and the light blue lines, but I'm only 20 milliseconds away. Yeah. Okay, so there's a slight improvement, in other words. Okay. Uh, things that, uh, let's see, things are different in other places, but some members of my team are not so lucky. For my colleague, Athos, in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, uh, the situation is very different. For the graph on the left, with the browser time excluded, while the regional latency is unsurprisingly the same, the latency from his closest edge is over 120 milliseconds. Okay, so processing time is nothing. Dang. 
there's a big there's a big difference here. The graph to the right, which includes browser time, shows that that ultimately it doesn't matter if he goes directly to the database or through the closest edge function. He will always be some 20 to 50 milliseconds behind me. That's actually a pretty cool little thing showing you right here, which is it, it doesn't matter, right? There's parts of this world that no matter what they do, they're going to get the same, you know, they're going to get the same experience. And that's kind of tough right there, right? I mean, obviously, this is this is why you want to measure, say, 100 or 1,000 times, because does this spike happen once every four times? Does it happen once every two times? Does it happen, you know, was this a lucky run? You don't know, right? Yeah, USA, USA. Yeah, exactly. Uh, li uh, real life is often more complex. This example is quite simple. A single query, a single hop. But what happens if we need to have a complex pattern where you query with the database five times in a row to uh, serve a request? Okay, so this is really good. This is much more realistic in the microservice world, if you will, right? Because you have a service that validates who you are. You have a service that validates, you know, that, that you have this kind of data. You have a service that goes through and make sure that the data is up to date. You have a service that goes through and inserts extra things that may need it. Like right at any larger company, there's not just like a singular request that's tied to a singular uh, HTTP request, right? There's often several trips to different databases, all pulling in information to give the user some level, whatever. You know what I mean? Prime Venn Pro Brazil. Thank you. Uh, here's Toronto with times over 300 milliseconds is a, is a reasonable experience. Okay. Wow. Okay. So if you're a little bit closer, you're definitely paying less cost here, but it's still a lot, right? This is a lot. Very exciting, but it's a lot. Toronto, stop with the T. Tor Toronto? No, sorry. Uh, I say, okay, again, I've, I've gone through this one too many times. I use endonyms, okay? You can, or I, sorry, I use exonyms. You use exonyms, okay? Hey, Quick question. Okay, tough guy. Hey, tough guy. Speaking all this nonsense, what is the capital of South Dakota? How would you say this, guy? Hey, yeah, you. How would you say that? How would you say that? Oh, you would say Pierre. Well, guess what, you dumb ass. That's not how you say it at all. It's pronounced peer, like P-U-R-E. Everybody around here calls it peer. 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 Why is it called peer? I don't know why it's called peer. It should be Pierre. And you know what? This guy calls it Pierre, okay? So guess what? F*** off, Toronto, okay? Get the hell out of here. Tell me how to live my life like that. I will... I call it Vite, I call it China, I call it Pierre, I call it Toronto. Y'all can just f*** right off, all right? There is one, there is, okay, there is one, there is one consideration, though. I do call it Brazil, okay? I do call it Brazil. Brazilians. Okay. <laughs> I just made the entire chat upset everybody is so angry now all right here's toronto okay 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 but in rio de janeiro uh we have crossed the 500 millisecond threshold usually over 700 milliseconds that's some pretty uh that's some pretty big ones right there right brazil brazil Ooh, brazil uh you done angered the canadians i know they're like i don't know what that's all about but you know what I'm going to say something mean, like, hey, mister, you're pronouncing it wrong, and then say sorry right afterwards. That's what us Canadians are good for. Uh, anyways, uh, anyways, let's keep on going now that we've done that. If somebody wasn't angry before, we've now just officially achieved it. Anyways, uh, there we go. So, yeah, that's looking, I mean, it, it's that's a lot of milliseconds, okay? This is a lot of milliseconds. The poor souls in Brazil won't get much better experience from either Supabase or Neon, two other squeal-based newcomers either. Supabase takes close to three seconds for five end-to-end -end queries. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, Superbase. Oh, damn. I mean, Planet Scale just destroyed you. 
Planet Scale is literally three times plus faster than Super Base. That is nutty. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm assuming these queries are uh, fair. And what I mean by fair is that they are, uh, that they're like one to one in complexity. You would assume, right? Neon is more than two times better than Super Base, but this query pattern still takes more than a second. Both post gri, post gri based offerings fare worse than Planet Scale. They do. They both fare worse than Planet Scale by far. Absolutely. Look at that. Damn, Planet Scale. So good job, Planet Scale. Planet Scale, you are literally significantly better than these ones. Okay. Oh, uh, what are those graphs showing us? Beyond the raw numbers, these graphs reveal something interesting. The light blue line that represents routing uh, your request directly to the U.S. is way faster, sometimes by a factor of three. Uh, the edge is supposed to provide an architecture that abstracts location and lets you just automatically run your code close to your, uh, your users. The moment databases enter the picture, the equation flops. It pays, and big, to be aware of your database, uh, where your database is, and just route your request there. Too bad for global users. Ah, very interesting. I can't believe that, that instead of sticking in Brazil, you route your request, because that's, that's how I'm reading it, right? You're actually routing your request to America. America! And it is literally that much better. I have a hard time even comprehending that, to tell you the truth. Uh, I guess I guess that makes sense. That makes sense, right? All right, enter the data edge. Terso is built differently. It's a full squeal database for the data edge. It puts data replication front and center with an architecture that makes it extremely affordable to run compute around the uh, edge. Cheap enough that we can spread replicas in many locations. Our free tier offering allows for three locations. It makes your queries fast wherever the users are. Let's look at my numbers again from Toronto. Uh, this this time using Terceau, doing a single query. Damn, that's fairly uniform. 12 milliseconds and 80 milliseconds. Let's go back up to planet scale. Not the same. Not the same. All right, like I told you, the Terso people are one of the most talented group of engineers I have ever met. Okay, they're not these they're, they're not these engineers that, you know, they're, they're real engineers, okay? They make me blush, okay? All right, so let's go over here. So let's go back down to this. So this is fast. All right, uh, this is much better. It's barely any difference between going to a database preferred region and mine. Yeah, so you don't even have to route your request. You can just let it fly. But once more, we've grown used to the numbers in North America. So once again, let's see our friend Athos down in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a we have a difference. Athos now gets the same 10 milliseconds from the Brazil region that I got from Toronto. Oh, yeah, look at that. The, the, the dark blue is flip-flopped. The dark blue, using just your global routing, is completely flip-flopped. You actually have an inverse. It is now way faster to use your global whatever routing as opposed to doing regional-specific routing to the database. That's, like, significantly faster, right? That's, that's, that's unfairly faster. Comparatively to Neon, this is... 20 times faster uh super base it's 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 a number in which i can't i can't even calculate okay i can't do numbers that big i can't do numbers that big and comparatively to uh our boys over at uh planet scale six times six x uh or more than six x i don't know what that is okay uh all right, he can even get queries served end-to-end -end in less than 60 milliseconds, even faster than I can. This means he's physically closer to the closest point of presence than I am. But there's something more interesting lurking in the graph on the right. Uh, the light blue line is much bigger. Uh, or is much higher. This means that forcibly going to the U.S. is now much slower, as it should be. The whole round trip is now around 150 milliseconds, which is just around the physical uh, dictates. A very similar number than what we got in the first example. Yes, okay, for more complex queries. The difference is even more pronounced when he does five queries in a row. That is a... Ooh, yeah, look at that. Look at those five queries, baby. Look at that. It's it's like a... It's, look at that. That thing's probably averaging like 110 milliseconds. This is actually really impressive. And four times better than the 250 milliseconds he got with Planet Scale. So 4x that, 10x of Neon, and 20 times better than Superbase. 
this is what you want. You want the purple line low. You don't want the blue line low because for those that don't understand what's happening, effectively what's happening here, for those that don't actually, uh, this is called math. Don't worry about the math. Okay, I was doing some math. Just don't worry about it. Uh, so for those that are wondering what's happening here, uh, effectively what's happening is that when you're off and you're, you're, you're in South America, right? You're down here in South America and up in U.S. East is your database. What is happening is that they're going to their local data center, wherever that's at, and then they have to make five back-to-back -back queries. Right. And so when that happens, you have this really bad pattern of having to go all the way around. But if you have perfect, you know, if you have perfect rep, uh, replication that just allows for up to date data around the world, instead, you're just going like this. Right. And so instead of managing what region is your database in, you simply just let it go to any region and you have replicas properly set up. Boom. Yeah, I know it's nothing new, but people find this amazing that it can be so fast. And really, all this is showing you is that physical distance causes a lot of latency, right? You're having an existential crisis? Well, don't have one. Don't have one, Jersey Milker. All right. So anyways, so you can do, look at all these. You got a lot of locations. Okay, that's sweet. I like that. A lot of locations. So you can just go replicate databases all around. Boom. Go give it a try. Join the Discord. Give it a try. Lip squeal. Okay. Get yourself a little lib squealing going on. The name is the data gen. Uh, the length of your dick matters. It's true. Uh, do they have Chile? I assume they have something no uh, close to Chile, right? So they have Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and Sao Paulo, Brazil. I mean, that does make a huge market difference versus going all the way up to America. Hell yeah, America. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if they have Chile. Oh, they do. They have Santiago, Chile. They have Santiago. The name is the Beast Code. Now, stop ignoring my question. Uh, how do you say the capital of MT? Now, so, Beast Code, there's two ways to say the capital of M uh, Montana. For those not in the capital, we call it Helena. For those in the capital, they call it Helena. No, Memcache is a little bit different. Santiago de Chile! Santiago de Chile! Okay, Bisco, I know these things, okay? I'm not a Helena guy, okay? Yeah, you know this, Bisco. How do you say the capital of uh, es Eswantini? I have no idea. Eswantini, these nuts in your mouth. Helena, I hardly knew her. I know exactly. Also worth watching the weather. Oh, thank you. Brazil. Anyways, super cool. I actually really like this. This is super cool. This kind of stuff I actually want to go and play around with. You know what? Not fair. Plan scale has read-only replicas, just like Terceau. Uh Interesting. Well, I'd have to. Uh, we, I mean, I'd, we'd have to see. Okay, so that's a good point. So we'd have to see what their read-only replicas and all these things are, and actually go and do that. Read-only replicas do come with their own problems, though. That means you can't. You know, any mutation, you're you're still paying the big cost. Uh, what are some reasons you wouldn't want to use the edge? Uh, if you want to control your own response times, if you want, to, I mean, there's there's reasons like Netflix doesn't do it because we have our own custom routing. We do a lot of stuff, right? I think there's definitely a scale that exists where you stop wanting someone else's Kubernetes cluster and you want your own. You know, I think there does exist a region that makes sense. Oh, wait, he works for Netflix? Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. What can you do with uh, Terceau, Squeal Light, compared to Planet Scale? Uh, I think they're all the same thing, right? They're all Squeal, right? And so you can pretty much do all the same thing. Falcor, okay, stop it. Isn't Planet Scale more expensive than just hosting your own Redis interest uh, on your own K8s? I, I don't know. I don't know Planet Scale's uh, cost, but Terceau is pretty cheap. Their free tier is 8 gigabytes, if I'm not mistaken, plus 3 replications. So pretty good. I mean, eight, that's, that's, I mean, that gets you more than off the ground for most data storage stuff when, it, when you're starting off. Yeah, you still have eventually consistent issues. This is very, very true. What, uh, let's see, what about Cloudflare uh, worker DBs? I've never played with those. Netflix works? It does. If so is it better than Cockroach? I don't know anything about Cockroach. I'm very curious about Cockroach because ultimately it is written in Go, right? And so there is the fundamental flaw of Cockroach, which is there are garbage collections. So I think as a database, you probably don't want... Uh, you, you, you probably want a, a managed memory. Right, you want a rust cockroach, right? You you kind of want to manage memory. Oh, very cool. That's that's. I mean, that's a lot of reads and writes. 
It's worth checking out Tiger Beetle, too. Tiger Beetle? What? The, okay, Viewer, you're messing with me. I can tell Viewer is nothing but a memer, and he's coming at me with that Tiger Beetle energy. Yeah, right. Nice try, Tiger Beetle. You can Tiger Beetle these nuts. 